Well, welcome back. Um, today I'm going to be canning some salmon. If you saw Daniel's, or I guess our last video, you can see that uh, Jonah and Daniel got three salmon, spring salmon, and uh, today I'm going to can it. So you're probably wondering, well, why are you not eating that fresh because that's the best salmon? Well, it is the best salmon and we did eat some fresh, but Daniel absolutely loves canned salmon and he loves to take it for lunch. So um, this time I'm gonna actually be doing some things a little bit different because you know I have another uh, can, uh, salmon canning video. Um, I'm gonna only put the, the salmon in half pints because that seemed to be, the, the one pint was a little bit too much for him to eat for uh, lunch, so we're going with half pints. I'm also gonna be using the uh, recipe that's in this book this time. Uh, not that I didn't like the last recipe, loved it, um, but just trying something different. So anyways, join me. Okay, so I'm cutting the fish into, I don't know, about an inch and a half slices, enough to where it fits in the space of the half pint jar here. So you can see I had one, I kind of tested it out, I have my <laughs> little marks on the cutting board, and I'm just going through and cutting each section like this, and then it'll just wrap around. Now I like to put my skin side in, um, a lot of people like to put the skin side out so it looks all pretty in the jar, um, but it's harder to clean when you do that, um, the jars later, because these scales will get all stuck to the glass. So for me, I like it better this way, um, so that the jar is easy to clean later. Uh, make sure you have a sharp uh, knife when cutting, um, so that your cuts are clean, and I'm just gonna keep cutting it up. And then I've got my brine over here. So this is a one cup of canning salt with about 16 cups of water. And this stuff, this is not, I don't believe I did this last time, but this is part of this recipe. So you're gonna take these pieces and you're just gonna put them into your brine. And it's gonna sit in this brine for uh, about an hour. And then once we, um, once that hour is up, then I'm gonna take it out. We're gonna let it drain for about 15 minutes and then we'll start packing the jars. Okay, so you can see that my brine is full. So that's gonna be plenty to can. It's probably gonna be more than I canned last time. So I'm gonna actually portion this out, um, probably into three portions, and I'm gonna just freeze it for uh, dinner. All right, so while we are waiting for the fish to brine or finish brining, I've already chopped up some jalapenos, so I'm gonna do some with jalapenos, some without, and that's basically it this time around. And then over here, I've gotten my Presto pressure canner out, and I'll tell you a little bit about what you need to do to prepare it. I've got my half pint uh, jars washed. They need to be at room temperature. You do not have to sterilize these because they'll be in the pressure canner for over, I think it's 10 minutes. Anything over 10 minutes, you don't have to sterilize. Um, so just hand wash. And let me get the Presto out and I'll uh, show you what you need to do for that. Okay, so Presto canner, I have one with a um, dial gauge on it. So for the fish, we're gonna go at 11 pounds for 100 minutes. Um, one thing you wanna do to make sure that your canner is ready to go is make sure that your vent is not plugged. You can just hold it up to the light, see if you can see through it, it's good. You've got a seal on the inside. And what else? You're gonna put three quarts of water in here. I don't know what kind of canner you have, but um, with the Presto, you put like three quarts in. And then I've got these two uh, different um, uh, bases. One is for the very bottom, so that the jars are not right up against the uh, heat. And then for stacking, you can put another one on top of that. I'm actually gonna check to see how many I can actually stack up in here to see if I can actually get all of them in here. We'll see, I haven't ever tried that with um, a bunch of half pints. So, yeah, all right. So now the fish is out of the brine and I'm just letting it sit here and drain for 15 minutes. Looks pretty. Right. While we're waiting for the fish to drain, Daniel and I decided that guacamole sounds delicious. So, let's make some really quick. These actually look perfect. 
tongue was pointing to the proof that tough he was, how made for the mock he was, to distance himself from his father. As the book Wildbird, which the film is based on, tells us, you couldn't kid around with him. He was wired very tight. Okay, One of the let's see what we got. Pretty easy to make your own guacamole. It depends on what you want in it. I think some people put mayonnaise and stuff like that, but I stopped doing that a long time ago. I like to actually put some salsa in it. That isn't to say that it was simply this one insecurity which made Tommy so hot headed. He clearly had an appetite for murder and violence, but it must have been constantly in the back of his mind how he was deceived by other monsters. Or I suppose you could just cut up your own onions and tomatoes. But I actually bought some uh, nice looking salsa here. If I can figure out how to open it. Show the way. Oh, there we go. Mmm, smells good. So we're going to put a little bit like that. We're just going to chop it up. I should have put this in the mortar and pestle. Is that what you call it, Dal? fresh lime, so we're just going to throw a little bit of concentrate in it. A little pepper. A little salt. And the best part, let's try it. Perfect. All right. Now, you just open a bag of chips. Okay, so the fish is drained for 15 minutes. It looks really nice. Here's the first uh, bit of jars we got going on. We got the jalapenos, lids. This is vinegar. We're gonna wipe the rims. One thing to remember about your jars is make sure to look to make sure that they're in good condition, that they don't have a chip on this rim. And again, like I said, I'm gonna put the fish in uh, meat side out. And it's almost basically one slice per jar, just about. In this case it is. As you can see, there's not very much room, but you don't wanna go higher than this rim right about here. So you got a, an inch head space. Um, but you see that's basically it. You're going to get one in here. And there's probably at least, well, I have, I cleaned 24 jars because there's going to be at least that. Um, I'm going to put a couple jalapenos in here to kind of fill up some of the open spaces. Uh, so, I don't know. That's probably about enough. I'll put one more in. Okay. Then we're gonna take our vinegar. We're going to wipe the rim here. You don't wanna have any kind of uh, 
dirt, <laughs> dirt. Well, anyways, food particles on there. And then you put your lid on and your ring and you kind of just hand tight. That's it, you don't wrench it down and it's done. You don't have to put any liquid in. And now I'm gonna put it in the canner. We're just gonna keep doing that. I'll do one more. Put it in like this. This actually has quite a big of a hole in the middle of it, so I'm gonna try to shove down a little piece here to fill that pocket. You can see there's like a little hole right here. So I'm just gonna put that right down in here, throw a couple jalapenos in, or slices of jalapenos. I wanna to try to get one just right on the outside so it's easy to tell which one has the jalapenos and which one doesn't. That is it. We did not debone or take the skin off because it's not necessary. Um, the canning process will basically take care of that for us. Okay. So we're gonna take the vinegar, clean the rim. Put a lid on. And put a rim on. Or not rim. <laughs> ring. So lid, ring, and in the canner it goes. And I'll just keep repeating that. All right, so we have all of the cans in there. I actually ended up putting jalapenos on in every single jar since I had enough. So I think we have like, I don't know, 23 jars worth. Oh yeah, since we only have one opening. This is three high um, layered, and I'm just gonna get the lid on and get it going. We're gonna um, heat it up and get the water boiling um, with the lid on, and then um, once we start seeing some um, steam, steady steam coming out of the vent, then we'll let it vent for 10 minutes. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it, but if you look right here, you can see some of the steam venting up right here. And we're going to start the timer and let that go for 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes and I'm gonna put the regulator on. You're gonna start seeing, you know, the dial gauge go up to five. Once it reaches five, I usually start turning the heat down and we're gonna try to get it all the way up to 11. And then once it reaches 11, it's gonna be 100 minutes of processing time. You can see it, we've reached five, so I turn the temperature down by half. All right, so we're at 11 and I'm gonna turn down the heat a little bit. We're gonna turn on the timer for 100 minutes. And we're good to go. All right, so we have, let's see, 18 minutes left. And in the meantime, Daniel has made a, what do we call this, rib roast? And we've been eating off the uh, rib part. Oh my gosh, it is so good. It's resting right now. But anyways, coming along, you can see we're at 11 pounds of pressure. All right, so the timer just went off and I'm just gonna turn the uh, temperature off. Then we're just gonna let the uh, dial gauge come down to zero. And then once it gets to zero, we'll take the regulator off and let it sit for another, I don't know, 10 minutes. And then we'll take the lid off and let it sit for like another 10 minutes and then we'll take the jars out. Okay, let's get the lid off here or let's get the regulator off. Okay, and now we're gonna wait for another 10 minutes. You can see all that steam coming out. All right, let's take the lid off, see what's going on. Kind of 
kind of lift it away from yourself. Let all the steam go in the other direction and not your face. <laughs> this isn't spa day. You already hear jars clicking. Okay, so we're gonna let them sit in there for another 10 minutes. Okay, let's start taking these out. I've heard a lot of uh, pinging. Here we go. Good, smells good. Oops. Okay, so far I only see one out of all these that has not sealed yet, but we're gonna let them sit overnight because just because they're not sealed now doesn't mean they're not gonna be sealed by tomorrow. Daniel is going to enjoy these for lunch. Perfect size. All right, here it all is. 23 jars. So far all sealed except for this one. And we'll let it sit here until tomorrow. And then if it doesn't seal, then that'll be Daniel's first lunch. We'll just put it in the fridge. All right, so the only other thing left to do, and I'm not gonna put this on video, but tomorrow um, when they're cool, I'll take the rings off and wash them up, put the month and year on them, and then put them in the pantry. All right, guys, have a good one.